So hello everyone and welcome. Thank you for joining me in the video today. So last time you saw this instrument, there were certainly a few problems with it that really need to be addressed in order for it to be a truly good playing instrument. So what I want to do today is I want to go through this clarinet and I want to fix all the problems that I found with it in my review of this instrument. So without further ado, let's get started. Alright, so the last time you saw this clarinet, there were a lot of problems with it. The most important problems to fix, in my opinion, are the intonation and the keys. The problem with the intonation that I noticed was that the clarion B, clarion C were both a bit sharp, but the shallow mode G and clarion D were both extremely flat. So what that means is I need to fill this tone hole in a little bit, and I need to enlarge and undercut this tone hole. So first, let's get the keys off. All right, so now all of our key work is disassembled. The tone holes are uncovered, which means we can now work on them. So before I work on the tone holes, I just want to explain the concept of tuning an instrument really quickly. So you have to think of the clarinet like a closed tube. So essentially, the shorter the tube is, the sharper the note, and the longer the tube is, the flatter the note. So when we're tuning a specific note on a clarinet, we're either going to enlarge the tone hole, which will essentially bring that upper edge of the tone hole closer to the mouthpiece, therefore making a shorter tube, making it sharper. Or what we're going to do is we're going to bring that upper edge a little bit further down on the instrument, and we're actually going to make the note a little bit flatter. So by doing this, we can tune individual notes on the instrument and make the whole instrument a little bit more in tune. Now, one thing to remember when tuning is that you're not just tuning one note. You see, because the clarinet overblows at a 12th, you're also tuning the note in the upper register or the notes in the altissimo register if you're tuning a tone hole further up along the instrument. So we have to be cautious about how we do this, otherwise we may throw other notes on the instrument out of tune. In this case, the low F and clarion C are both a little bit sharp, and the clarion D and low G are both extremely flat, so we can tune these notes in the same direction without any negative consequences. Okay, so I think I got this tone hole to the correct size. Now, actually what I had to do was I had to go in with a uh, large drill bit, about three eighths of an inch, and I had to drill it out. But the problem with using a drill bit is that it'll often leave a lot of mess. So you always wanna make your final cuts with a file. Now what I'm using is a chainsaw file that I cut the end off and smooth it out just in case I accidentally hit the bore, it won't leave a big gouge. Now you wanna be extremely careful about putting a scratch in the bore. It really won't make too much of a difference in playing, but it can significantly affect the resale value of the instrument. So now that the tone hole is the correct size, we need to refinish the surface because it's no longer smooth and it has a few nicks on it. So now let's get our tone hole refinishing kit. Now you can easily spend well over a thousand dollars on tools just to refinish a few sizes of tone holes. However, what I like to do is I like to use some improvised tools that I made myself. These are some bits for a rotary tool, such as a rotary grinder, that what I've done is I've taken a flat piece of tile or marble, I put some sandpaper on it, and I finished the surface of these tools so that they're extremely flat and smooth, so they'll leave a nice straight cut. This tool is for a slightly larger tone hole, and this tool is for making the inner chamfer of the inner edge of the tone hole. I also have this tool, which is actually a piece for one of those things you use for breaking car windows in an emergency. Um, so this one end is flat, and I put some I've roughened it up essentially with some really rough sandpaper to make uh, grooves in it and I've done the same to this side. So this is used for the final finish of the tone hole to leave a really smooth flat surface and this is again for the inner chamfer of the tone hole. So there's probably about five dollars worth of tools here compared to a thousand. It's technically not as professional as what some techs might use. However, it works just the same and the results speak for themselves.
All right, so that tone hole is fairly well finished. Now, the way you can tell that a tone hole is smooth and level is if you look at it from the side and reflect the light off it so you see a nice clean line. You don't want to see any little gouges or chips, which could indicate that there will be a leak once you put the pads back on the instrument. So that tone hole looks really good. So I'm going to say that this tone hole is finished. Next, we're going to be looking at this tone hole where we're going to do the opposite. The note is too sharp, so we have to fill in a little bit. And what we use for that is we use a little bit of quick set two-part epoxy. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put the instrument vertically and I'm going to apply a little bit of epoxy to the upper edge of the tone hole. And what I want to do is I want to make sure I don't get the epoxy in the bore, which could affect the response of the note. And I want to make sure it's not sticking out past the edge of the tone hole, which could cause problems with the pad sealing. All right, so I adjusted the key work so that these right hand pinky keys are a lot higher up and a lot closer together. So that should be a lot more comfortable. I also had to readjust the alignment between the crow's foot and the EB key because I did have to adjust the key a little bit so that threw the alignment off. But now all the pads are sealing properly like they should and the instrument has a nice tight seal. So that's really good to see. Alright everyone, well unfortunately that's all the time I have for the video today. I hope you enjoyed it and as you just heard the instrument is now much better than it was when it was new. Um, it took a lot of work, in fact I would say that you probably only saw about 10% of the work I had to put in this instrument. I had to take these keys off and modify the tone holes several times just to get the notes perfectly in tune. But I think the work paid off in the end because this is now a great clarinet. It's a lot more comfortable, it's more in tune. And overall, it's just a very decent instrument, especially considering it costs less than $300. So I'm very happy to see that. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Have a wonderful day.